Hey guys, it's Corner here. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to solve commutators faster. Now, if you don't fully understand how commutators work, I would definitely recommend going and seeing that video right up there. Um, as I explain what commutators are and I go in a lot more in detail. If you've already seen the, that video, then this tutorial will definitely be helpful um, because I explain how to swap two specific pieces on the center without interacting with any other pieces on the puzzle. And I really go in detail on how it's done. Now, this tutorial is going to be talking about how it's done faster. Now, you might remember in that tutorial that when I was teaching you how to do it, you would only be swapping one piece at a time. And this could become very time consuming, especially when I started doing an example solve on the 7x7. It took quite a few minutes until I actually got both the centers done. Now I will be, instead of teaching you how to do one piece at a time, I'll be teaching you how to do multiple pieces at a time. So let's say we want to swap this corner and this edge with this corner and this edge. To do this, we would start off by turning the front the same way we would have to on the specific case on the last tutorial, tutorial that I explained. We would bring these two layers down instead of one layer. So this becomes our bar here um, that we will be making use of replacing. Then when we turn the front back, we can bring this bar down and that will be replacing these two pieces, bringing them down here. We'll turn the front back over again that way we can bring these back up and then we'll bring the front over so then we can bring these back up and fix the centers and as you can see we swap the corners and the edges now you might remember also in the last tutorial I kept mentioning that this may get very confusing you should just watch the whole way through and it'll just make more sense as we go along that'll probably be the case with this tutorial because a lot of the times this probably will not make any sense um, so the farther along we go, the more it'll, the more you will figure it out on your own. Um, but I definitely recommend, if you're going to start doing this, I'd recommend starting out with a five by five because doing a six by six and a seven by seven, you're more likely easily going to accidentally scramble, um, and you probably want to just be able to solve the cube back pretty easily. So that's why I'd recommend doing a five by five because um, you're definitely going to accidentally scramble it multiple times, and that's okay because. Um, there's not much else you can do, um, but I'll give you a few more examples on what you can do for 5x5 five five, um, for solving commutators faster. Now one other quick example that I want to briefly touch on is uh, when these two are not already kind of lined up and how would you fix that? Well, it is going to work pretty much the same way how it would with just one piece. You're just going to rotate the front, that way they are lined up next to each other. That way when you bring these two down, you can turn the front back and then you can bring this layer down into here, so then it lines up. And then when we turn the front back, these two pieces will come up and replace the line. So it'll work just the exact same way, just instead it is using two layers instead of one. Just make sure you rotate the front, that way they're lined up in the same way. Now something that can easily come up a lot and you're going to accidentally scramble the cube without thinking about it is when you have something like this. When you're solving more than two of the exact same pieces at the same time, you could end up scrambling your cube, especially when it's for five by five. Six by six and seven by seven work a little differently, but for five by five, you can definitely accidentally scramble the cube. Notice that we have two corners here that need to go up into here and one edge here. To solve this, you might think, okay, well, let's just go through the regular process. We bring this down, rotate it, and then we would bring all three of these down, right? But here's the thing, we're getting green in here, and this is just going to completely scramble up the cube. So instead, we're going to be solving this in two steps by solving the corner and the edge here and here, and then we're going to solve these corners by themselves. So we would bring this down, turn the front, bring these two layers, turn the front, replace it, and then back up. So we solved these two parts. Now what about the corners? Well, they're going to work the exact same way. And there you go, it's solved. And I know lots of you are going to say, oh, that was way too fast, I couldn't follow along. Well, like I said, the one tutorial, I go a lot more in detail and a lot slower on how this is done. So be sure to check that out if you cannot follow along. 
Now let's say we have something like this, uh, where we have these two pieces here and this edge and this corner here. There really is no simple way of swapping both these all at the same time without doing setup moves. And that is something that's really confusing that I do not want to have to explain. So I just say um, solve the edge separately and then solve the corner separately. The only time really when you want to solve faster is if they're already lined up together or if they're already like paired. Otherwise, I would not say to just do try figuring out a way to solve this at the same time because that kind of tutorial is way advanced and I really would rather not have to explain in this video because that would be way too long of a tutorial and I would rather have a video explaining setup moves in the future. Uh, it's five by five out of the way. It should be easy to figure out from there. What about seven by seven? Now some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, what about six by six? You skipped six by six. Well, yes, I did. And one of the main reasons why I'm not worried about six by six is because faster commutators work way better on larger cubes, especially like big, big cubes. And that's one of the reasons why I just want to go ahead and explain seven by seven. So let's go ahead and explain what would we do if we have these three here. To do this, we would just go ahead and do as we normally would, except this just requires more layers. So we would slice this down, turn the front, bring these three down, turn the front back, bring that up, turn the front back, and yeah, you get the idea. Um, just the only difference is that you're using more layers. Um, so yeah, and also that three bar could be anywhere else as long as if they line up the exact same way, um, this will definitely work. So if, if you have these three up here and then these three down here, that won't work because they're the opposite side of three. So simply put, uh, make sure you're using the right pair and them being lined up before you just go ahead and start performing the moves because you don't want to accidentally scramble your cube. Now, how do we determine on a 7x7 whether or not we have to perform multiple steps at once? Now, for instance, you might remember in the 5x5 I said um, you had to perform this specific case twice. Well, how do you determine that on a larger cube? Well, there are three pieces until you reach the middle on a 7x7 in the centers. Five center pieces, the third one is going to be the middle. If you go into four, then that means that you need to perform the ca two cases. So see here, I have this block here. This is technically three blocks long. If I had one down here, like a fourth bar here, then that means I'm going to have to perform it twice. This may not make any sense, but the farther along you get familiar with commutators, it will. I know this may not seem useful right now, but it certainly will later on when you get better, when you get a lot better at commutators. Now, I want to also show you this case here, since I have it set up, um, is what would you do if you have something like this? Well, this is three, so it three long, it should be fine. So we're just going to turn the front, and then we're going to bring both these down, turn the front back, bring both these layers down, and then we're just going to undo what we did. So by turning the front, and then back again, just like that. Also, uh, one other thing I probably should have mentioned a second ago is no, you cannot swap centers, so keep that in mind when doing commutators. And the very last thing I wanted to show you is just a very, very random case here. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do one random case rather than one whole solve is that way you guys can kind of see how to determine what pieces need to be swapped. Now, this is very, very different and kind of all over the place. And it's going to be like, okay, how are we going to approach this the best way? Well, you might see, okay, so we have a three block here and a three block here. Why don't we swap these? But they do not line up when they're next to each other because this three would need to be here instead of up here. So that's not going to work. So we have these two here and that can swap with these two up here. Um, and that probably will be the best approach because then we can treat these two as its own pair because this three block has no way of swapping all at once. So let's go ahead and swap these with these. Okay, and then we can also see we have this other middle bar here and we can swap that with this middle bar here. So we would line it up and then we would perform our usual algorithms that we would. Now 
Then we have these two here, and then this one and this one. Now this is a little bit particular when it comes to a case because these two you cannot swap at once. You would have to do all three of these pieces by themselves. So this corner I'd have to swap with this corner, this edge would have to swap with this edge, and this edge would have to swap with this one. There's no way you can swap these two and these two in one case. So let's go ahead and do all three pieces by themselves. So that I just did the corner. Um, let's go ahead and do this edge with this one. And then last one is this one. And there you have it. That is how you do commutators faster. Now, once again, if any of you are frustrated, can't quite figure it out, you may still need to be focusing more on the first tutorial that I showed you before. Uh, I know when I started doing this, I really couldn't even figure it out myself, so don't feel bad if you can't quite get it straight. That's perfectly fine. Just keep practicing it. You'll get it eventually. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. I'm sure other cubers might even answer them. But anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button down below and hit the subscribe button as well as those bell notifications to be notified when upcoming videos are released. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.